Sophia had always been the smart one in her family. She could fix a broken appliance, cook a gourmet meal, and balance the books all at the same time. Her husband, Jack, loved her for it. He was a simple man who worked hard and loved his wife with all his heart. One day, Sophia got a call from the bank. Someone had stolen their identity and was draining their account. Sophia sprang into action. She called the bank, the police, and even the credit card company. She tracked down the thief and got their money back. Jack was amazed. Sophia, how do you do it? He asked. Sophia just smiled. It's easy when you know what to do, she said. But little did they know, this was just the beginning of their troubles. The next day, Sophia received a mysterious letter in the mail. It was addressed to her, but there was no return address and no indication of who had sent it. The letter was brief, but its contents made Sophia's heart skip a beat. Dear Sophia, it read. I know what you did. You think you're so smart, but you're not as clever as you think. Meet me at the old warehouse at midnight if you want to know the truth. Sophia was shaken. What did the letter mean? What had she done? And who was behind it? She tried to brush it off as a prank, but she couldn't shake off the feeling that something was off. She decided to confide in Jack, but when she showed him the letter, he just shrugged it off. Don't worry about it, Sophia. It's just some crazy person trying to scare you. But Sophia knew better. She knew that she had to get to the bottom of it. That night, Sophia couldn't sleep. She kept thinking about the letter and what it could mean. At midnight, she got out of bed and decided to go to the old warehouse. Jack was fast asleep, so she didn't disturb him. As she approached the warehouse, she saw a figure waiting in the shadows. It was a woman, dressed in a long coat and a hat. Who are you? Sophia asked, trying to keep her voice steady. My name is not important, the woman replied. What's important is what I know. You see, Sophia, your husband is not who you think he is. Sophia's heart skipped a beat. What was the woman talking about? What do you mean? Sophia asked, her mind racing with possibilities. Meet me tomorrow at the coffee shop downtown if you want to know the truth, the woman said, before turning and disappearing into the night. Sophia was left standing alone in the darkness, her mind reeling with questions. What did the woman mean? And what secrets was Jack hiding? The next day, Sophia couldn't concentrate at work. She kept thinking about the mysterious woman and what she had said. At lunchtime, Sophia went to the coffee shop downtown her heart racing with anticipation. The woman was already there, sipping a cup of coffee. Sophia sat down across from her. Okay, I'm here, Sophia said. What do you know about my husband? The woman smiled. Jack is not who he says he is, she repeated. He's been lying to you, Sophia. He's been lying to everyone. Sophia felt like she had been punched in the gut. What are you talking about? She asked, trying to keep her voice steady. Jack is actually a former CIA agent, the woman said. He's been in witness protection for years. And his real name is not even Jack. 
Sophia's mind was reeling. She didn't know what to believe. Was this woman telling the truth? And if so, why was she revealing this information now? Sophia was stunned. She didn't know what to say or think. The woman handed her a folder full of documents and photographs. Proof, the woman said. This is who your husband really is. His name is Alexander Petrov, and he's been hiding in plain sight. Sophia's hands trembled as she took the folder. She didn't know what to believe. She felt like her whole world was crumbling around her. Why are you telling me this? Sophia asked, looking up at the woman. Because I'm his old partner, the woman replied. We worked together at the CIA. And I'm the one who helped him fake his own death and enter witness protection. Sophia's eyes widened in shock. Why are you revealing this now? The woman sighed. Because Jack. Alexander. He's in danger. His past has caught up with him. And I'm trying to protect him. Sophia's mind was racing. She didn't know what to do or who to trust. But one thing was certain. Her life would never be the same again. Sophia left the coffee shop in a daze. She didn't know what to believe or who to trust. She felt like her whole marriage was a lie. She decided to confront Jack, but when she got home, he was nowhere to be found. She waited for hours, but he didn't come back. Sophia's anxiety grew. She started to wonder if the woman's story was true. Was Jack really in danger? Just as she was starting to lose hope, Jack walked in the door. He looked tired and worried. Where have you been? Sophia demanded. Jack hesitated. I had to take care of something, he said. I'll explain later. Sophia handed him the folder. Explain this, she said. Jack's eyes widened as he saw the documents and photographs. He knew he had been caught. Sophia, I, he started. But Sophia cut him off. Tell me the truth. She said. Who are you? Jack took a deep breath and sat down next to Sophia. My name is Alexander Petrov, he said. I was a CIA agent, and I was involved in some unsavory things. I had to fake my own death and enter witness protection to keep myself and the people I love safe. Sophia felt like she had been punched in the gut. She didn't know what to say or think. Why didn't you tell me? She asked finally. Jack shook his head. I was trying to protect you, he said. I didn't want you to get hurt. Sophia laughed bitterly. You were trying to protect me, she repeated. By lying to me, by deceiving me. Jack looked down, shamefaced. I know it was wrong, he said. But I didn't know what else to do. Sophia stood up and walked away. She didn't know if she could ever trust Jack again. But as she looked back at him, she saw the fear in his eyes. She realized that he was still in danger, and that she might be too. Sophia's mind was racing. She didn't know what to do or who to trust. But as she looked at Jack, she saw the desperation in his eyes. She knew she had to make a decision. Tell me everything, she said finally. Tell me about your past and why you're in danger. Jack nodded, relief washing over his face. I'll tell you everything he said. But we have to get out of here. Now, Sophia's heart skipped a beat. What's going on? 
she asked. Jack stood up and pulled her towards the door. We're not safe here, he said. My past has caught up with me, and they'll stop at nothing to silence me. Sophia's mind was racing as she followed Jack out of the house. She didn't know what was going on, but she knew she had to trust him. As they drove away from the house, Sophia saw a black car following them. She gasped. What's going on? She asked Jack. They've found me, Jack said grimly. We have to get out of here, now. Sophia's mind was racing. She didn't know what to do or who to trust. But as she looked at Jack, she saw the man she loved, not the CIA agent. Tell me everything, she said finally. Jack nodded, relief washing over his face. I'll tell you everything, he promised. And so he did. He told her about his past, about the missions he had been on, about the people he had hurt. He told her about the woman who had helped him fake his own death and enter witness protection. As he spoke, Sophia listened, her heart heavy with emotion. She didn't know what to make of it all, but she knew one thing, she still loved Jack, no matter what. But just as she was starting to process everything, they heard a knock at the door. Jack's eyes went wide with fear. It's them, he whispered. They've found me. Sophia's heart raced as Jack grabbed her hand and pulled her towards the back door. Run, he whispered. They ran through the woods behind their house, Jack pulling Sophia along. They could hear the footsteps behind them, getting closer and closer. Suddenly, Jack stopped and pulled Sophia into a small shed. He locked the door and leaned against it, panting. What's going on? Sophia whispered. They're agents from the CIA, Jack replied. They've been tracking me for months. I thought I had covered my tracks, but I guess I was wrong. Sophia's eyes widened in fear. What do they want? Jack's face was grim. They want me to come back in. They want me to finish the mission I started all those years ago. Sophia shook her head. You can't go back, she said. You have to stay here with me. Jack smiled sadly. I wish it were that simple, he said. But I have to protect you, Sophia. I have to keep you safe. Just then, they heard the shed door creak. Jack's eyes went wide with fear. It's them, he whispered. They've found us. Jack pushed Sophia into the corner of the shed, trying to shield her from the danger. The door creaked open, and a figure loomed in the entrance. Alexander Petrov, the figure said its voice cold and menacing. You've been a hard man to find. Jack stood tall, trying to protect Sophia. I'm not going back, he said. I'm not finishing the mission. The figure sneered. You don't have a choice, it said. You're coming with us, one way or another. Sophia saw her chance. She quietly moved behind the figure and grabbed a nearby shovel. She swung it with all her might, hitting the figure on the head. The figure crumpled to the ground, unconscious. Jack stared at Sophia in amazement. You saved me, he said. Sophia smiled. We're in this together, she said. But as they turned to leave the shed, they saw more agents approaching. They were surrounded. Jack and Sophia were trapped. 
They were surrounded by CIA agents with no way out. Jack knew he had to think fast, or they would both be captured. Suddenly, he remembered the woman who had helped him fake his own death. He pulled out his phone and dialed her number. Help, he said, when she answered. They've found me. The woman's voice was calm and reassuring. I'm on my way, she said. Just hold on. Jack and Sophia waited, surrounded by the agents. But just as they were about to be taken away, a car screeched up to the shed. The woman, who Jack had only known as Rachel, jumped out of the car and started firing a gun. The agents scattered, and Jack and Sophia made a run for it. They jumped in the car and sped away, leaving the agents behind. Who are you? Sophia asked Rachel, as they drove. Rachel smiled. I'm the one who's been keeping Jack alive all these years, she said. But as they drove, Sophia couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. She looked out the back window and saw a black car following them. She took a sharp turn and then another, but the black car kept following. We need to get off the grid, Rachel said, her eyes scanning the road. Jack nodded and Rachel took a dirt road turn off. They bounced along the rough road, but the black car kept coming. Suddenly, Rachel slammed on the brakes, and Jack and Sophia were thrown forward. Rachel had stopped in front of an old barn. In here, she said, jumping out of the car. They ran into the barn, and Rachel locked the door behind them. They caught their breath listening to see if the black car had followed. But as they stood there, Sophia realized something. We're trapped, she said. Rachel nodded. But we're safe for now. But as they looked around the barn, they saw that they were not alone. There was someone else there, hiding in the shadows. The figure in the shadows stepped forward revealing a young woman with a scar above her left eyebrow. Who are you? Sophia asked, trying to hide her fear. My name is Maya, the woman replied. I've been hiding here for weeks. Rachel helped me too. Jack's eyes narrowed. What do you mean? Maya hesitated. I used to work for the CIA too. I was part of a secret project, but I discovered something terrible. They're experimenting on people, using them as test subjects for mind control. Sophia's eyes widened in horror. That's what they want to do to Jack. Maya nodded. Yes, and they'll stop at nothing to get him. We have to get out of here, now. Rachel nodded in agreement. We need to get to the safe house. It's the only place we'll be safe. But as they turned to leave, they heard the sound of helicopters outside. The CIA had found them. The helicopters surrounded the barn, trapping him inside. Jack knew they had to act fast. Rachel... Can you hack into the helicopter's systems? He asked. Rachel nodded and pulled out her phone. I'll try. Maya stood guard at the door, ready to defend them if necessary. Sophia looked at Jack, fear in her eyes. What's going to happen? She asked. Jack took her hand. We'll get out of this, he promised. I won't let them take me. Rachel shouted, I'm in. I can disable the helicopters, but we have to move now. The helicopters suddenly lost power, 
and the blades stopped spinning. Jack, Sophia, Rachel, and Maya made a run for the car. As they sped away, Sophia looked back and saw the CIA agents swarming out of the helicopters. We're not safe yet, Jack said, his eyes on the rearview mirror. Suddenly, Rachel's phone rang. She answered, listened for a moment, and then turned to Jack. What is it? Jack asked. Rachel's face was grim. It's the woman who helped you fake your own death. She's been captured by the CIA. Jack's heart sank. What do they want? He asked. Rachel's voice was barely above a whisper. They want you to come in. They'll release her if you surrender. Sophia's grip on Jack's arm tightened. Don't do it, she said. They'll kill you. Jack knew she was right. But he also knew he couldn't abandon the woman who had saved his life. I have to go, he said finally. Rachel nodded. I'll come with you. Maya and Sophia protested, but Jack was resolute. He would not put anyone else in danger. As they arrived at the CIA headquarters, Jack steeled himself for what was to come. He walked in, Rachel by his side, and was immediately surrounded by agents. The woman who had helped him was brought out, bruised and battered. Jack's heart ached, but he knew he had to be strong. I'm here, he said. Let her go. The CIA agent in charge sneered. You're just in time for the final phase of the experiment. But just as all hope seemed lost, Maya and Sophia burst in, guns blazing. The agents were caught off guard, and Jack and Rachel were able to escape. They made their way to the safe house, finally free from the CIA's clutches. As they hugged each other, Jack knew he had found his true family. And he would do anything to keep them safe.